Hi, my name is Al Cahey. I teach at South Carlton High School in the Ottawa Carlton District School Board in Ottawa, Canada. I wrote the Google Meet extension, Google Meet attendance extension, to help me keep track of who's coming to my online meets during this extended uh, closure due to COVID. And I, I hope that this is something that you'll find useful as well. Once you've got the extension installed, you'll see that this text field and toolbar gets added to your screen. It starts normally on the, the hard left side of the screen, but as you see, it can be dragged to wherever you want to put it. In this most basic sense, there's a text field here, and I can either type or I can paste a list of names into the, into the field. A little bit more sophisticated functionality. You can see I've got this basic class list that we're looking at. I've got a grade 10 studies class. I can also quickly add another class that I'm going to call sample. And once I've done that, notice that this folder icon is now available. And that allows me to click and then I can read a class list that already has been saved as a text file or JavaScript file, it really doesn't matter which. And there I have the, the list of students that I expect to attend my meet. This is different from the, uh, the other attendance app that's on the, uh, on the market now, um, where they record who was there, but don't really tie it back to who you expected to be there. And subtle, but I think important difference with, uh, with mine. So we have the list of names that we expect to attend. I can jump back to the class list and there's the people who are on that list. I can jump back to my sample list. All of this information is saved. It's saved in what's called a local storage variable. Um, it means that it's stored on your, on your computer and uh, it will persist a closure. So if you, if you quit Chrome, if you restart your computer, come back in, all of that information should still be there. So if you, um, if you've entered the information once, hopefully you won't have to re-enter it again. Unfortunately, the, uh, the school board where I work, uh, when you shut down Chrome, it uh, wipes out all of your local storage variables. So I actually have to recreate my class list every time I, uh, I have a meet. But as I showed you, creating the sample class, then clicking on the folder icon, it's pretty painless to, uh, to get the, uh, the names back into the field. And so it's something I can do you know, just moments before the, the meet starts. In my list, these are the students that I expected to attend. Notice, for purposes of example here right now, that Jennifer is the last name on the list. So we've got everything set up. I'm going to join the meet. And we're now in. Notice that the attendance field disappeared. I've hidden it on the screen because I don't want it obstructing the, uh, the view or you know, distracting from the important things that you have on your screen. So it's gone hidden for now, but there's also this little check mark down at the bottom of the window. And if I click on that, it comes back. And if I click on it again, it goes away. So you can bring it up as you need. Normally, you shouldn't really need to do much with the uh, with this uh, with this text field during your meet because you've got the names entered already. If you're the first one into the meet, well then, as the kids arrive, a little tick check mark will get added beside each of the names um, automatically with, with no input or no, no uh, activity by you. In the background, I'm also storing the time at which they arrive. And so that will be recorded in addition to the start time of the meet. Now, you can always change the start time that we, we've come in, that little blue uh, stopwatch is available, so it may take a couple minutes for the, for the kids to arrive. There's a little bit of banter or whatever. And say, okay, guys, now we're going to get started. This is the start of the class. And so you click on that button, and now, oops, it is, or is it here? The time has changed a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit here. And so as the kids arrive, they're marked present. If things get a little bit out of whack, or if some of the kids got into the meet before you did, then I don't, they don't arrive, so there's, you know, there's no way to, to, to check them off as they come in. But you can always click over to the People's tab, and if there's a large number of people in your class, you may have to scroll down to the bottom. And as you do that, those students will automatically get checked off uh, in, the, in the field here. Now, in my text field over here, notice that 
a couple moments ago I said Jennifer was the last one on the list. Well, this character Al Kahi has arrived in the meeting. There's a question mark B in front of his name because I didn't expect to see him at this particular meet. But somehow he's gotten in or he, he attended for whatever reason. He's there. So your, la your list is, is predefined, but if anyone else shows up, they will get appended to the bottom of the list and they will get flagged with the question mark rather than a check mark to, to show that, uh, that they were unexpected attendees. At any point, again, I can click the, uh, this little icon, this uh, eraser icon, and when I do that, all of the check marks, all of the attendance check marks disappear. If I jump back over to the people tab, scroll down to the bottom if there's a large number of people, and now you see rather than a question mark beside my name, there's actually a check mark, and that's because my name was now on the list. It wasn't one that got added. Uh, what else is there? Uh, at any point, uh, you can also trigger a, a manual check of the attendance. This is more for uh, for my debugging purposes to uh, to test that I was clearing things and checking to you know, make sure that names got added properly. So you can manually trigger an attendance check, but uh, you know, quite honestly, I don't think you really need to. Uh, you'll really need to do that often. More often than not, you would probably want to go to the people tab rather than use the uh, use the, the check mark. As the teacher, you can have the, the Google Meet uh, attendance extension running on your computer. If you have a co-teacher, it can actually be running on their, their computer. It really doesn't matter where it runs. It's just going to record who arrives and, uh, and, uh, and the time at which they arrive. When the uh, when the call is over, we can end the call, come back out to the the main screen. There's my attendance field back on the screen with all of the check marks for the students who arrived, and we can now click on the save attendance, the little disk icon on the top right, and that creates a sample file in this case because it's my sample class. If it was my ICS 2.0 class, then it would be uh, the file name would be ICS 2.0. It's got a date stamp on the on the file, and within the file, there's also the date of the meeting, the time of the meeting, and the start time of the meeting. So all of that information is is captured for you. And that's about it. That's all there is to uh, to the extension. Uh, a few other buttons on the toolbar. We've already seen the eraser that will clear the checks. I can also clear all of the names in the class. I can also delete the class altogether. Little chicken switch here, are you sure you want to do that? Because there is no undo. Once we delete that class, we jump out to the default class list with my names that were there before. There is a, another option under here to reset that will erase all of the names and all of the local storage variables and basically get you back to a, a pre-install uh, state on your computer. In addition to the, the toolbar, under the uh, under the uh, extension. You can uh, get to a help page, which gives you a synopsis of the information that I've talked about here. Uh, it uh, tells you a little bit more about saving the files. There's also a link to a Facebook page that, uh, that's that been set up for the extension. If you're at all technically inclined and want to see the source code, I've got that publicly available. If you need to get in touch with me, there's my email information at the bottom of the the help page. But quite honestly, I would prefer if you if you did contact me through the uh, through the Facebook page. And I guess the the one last thought that I'd like to leave you with is, uh, as I said at the beginning, I am first and foremost a teacher, and for that reason, privacy and uh, and such is is utmost concern. And so I assure you, and you know, you can vet me through the uh, uh, through the repository, but uh, uh, there is no transmission or storage or uh, sharing of any information by this extension. Um, no student names, no usage patterns, no no other information is captured at all. It's uh, it's not something that uh, I'm interested in. It's not something that uh, I think should be shared by by an extension of this nature. So. If you have any questions or concerns, you know, please contact me through the Facebook page or through my email address. And uh, otherwise, I, I hope you find that, uh, that this little extension is, uh, is helpful. Take care and uh, stay safe. Thanks.